Today in class, we introduce this concept of related rates. And this video is just going to introduce you to the problems that we'll be tackling and the technique that we'll use to try and reach the solutions. So let's just dive in and find out what these related rates problems are all about. We have seen that for quantities that are changing over time, the rates at which these quantities change are given by derivatives. If two related quantities are changing over time, the rates at which the quantities change are related. For example, if a balloon is being filled with air, both the radius of the balloon and the volume of the balloon are increasing. This is a situation that's an example of related rates. I'm going to start, as I did in class, with an example problem where I'll run through the entire solution. Then we'll break down what I did into a list of steps for you. And then we'll run through two other examples that we did in class. Let's get going. Water is falling on a surface, wetting a circular area that is expanding at a rate of 8 millimeters squared per second. How fast is the radius of the wetted area expanding when the radius is 171 millimeters? So this is a classic uh, related rates problem. And what we do when we begin these problems is we draw a picture of what's happening. So we have this water landing onto the surface and it's creating a puddle. We'll call it a puddle in the shape of a circle. So the water's dripping down and this puddle is expanding, right? The area is expanding and along with the area, the radius is expanding, okay? So I have the circle drawn there. I'm, I've put some arrows on here indicating that this thing is getting bigger. And we are asked to find how fast the radius is expanding when the radius is 171 millimeters. So after you draw a picture of what's happening, you want to label some variables. And anything that's changing gets a variable. Any measurement that's changing gets a variable. So for example, this radius is getting bigger, so I'm going to put a variable on it, which is r. The entire shaded area is getting bigger, and I'm going to put a variable on that. We'll call that a. The numbers that you may see in the uh, written statement of the problem don't go in the picture unless they are constants. So right now, we're not placing anything else in the picture, and we certainly don't place the rates in the constant in the picture. So then after I label my picture and put some variables down, then I'm going to list the information from the story separately, either next to or under the picture, for the specific period of time uh, that we're interested in. So at the moment we want to know how fast this radius is growing, we know that it is 171 millimeters. So I take that variable r from my picture and I assign it that value for that moment in time. I also know that the circular area, right? Notice that word area there. Circular area is increasing, expanding at a rate of eight millimeters squared per second. And in the last slide, we just explained that the rates are derivatives. So what they're telling us here is the derivative of the area, the dA over dt, and everything is with respect to time here because that's what's changing, right? Time is moving forward while these changes are happening. The rate at which it's changing, which we're going to name dA over dt, is 8 millimeters squared per second. Now, I also want to list the thing that I'm trying to find. And what I'm trying to find is also a rate. I know it's a rate because it says how fast is the radius of the wetted area expanding. When they're asking for a how fast question, that's also a rate, meaning it's also a derivative. So what I'm trying to find in this problem is dr over dt. So I'm going to put a little question mark there just to remind myself what I'm looking for. So after you've drawn a picture, labeled the measurements that are changing with variables, and listed any other information from the written statement of the problem, our next job is to come up with an equation that relates these variables. And you may find the equations in different places. You might have to create one after drawing the picture and relating the variables from a known formula. Or in this case, 
we're just talking about area and radius. So we know from geometry that there's already a formula that goes along with the story. So I go ahead and I write that equation down. I just write down what I learned from geometry, which is that the area is pi times the radius squared. A equals pi r squared. That formula relates A and R, right? Those are the only two variables I have, and this equation has those variables, so we're in good shape. But remember, this is called a related rates problem. So we've related the, the actual variables, but we don't have a relationship yet for the rates of change of these variables. To do that, we need to take a derivative. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to do the derivative implicitly with respect to time because both A and R are changing over time. They're functions of time. So when we take the derivative, we are going to take the derivative with respect to time. In other words, the T in these derivatives is our independent variable, just as in most of our derivatives, X has been the independent variable. So when you do the derivative implicitly, whenever you take the derivative of one of these functions of time, you have to use the chain rule. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to do implicit differentiation. The derivative of a is just 1. But because a is a function of time, I have to multiply by dA dt, just like we did in our implicit differentiation problem. So this turns out to be just dA dt. And I'm going to keep going. And when I take the derivative of pi r squared, this is the constant multiple of a power. So I'll, find, I'll use the power rule. The derivative will be 2 pi r, but again, r is a function of time, so I have to multiply by dr dt because of the chain rule. And then I'm going to clean this up just by multiplying that 1 dA dt. And I end up with dA over dt equals 2 pi r dr over dt. Now I have an equation relating the rates. That's why they call these related rates. And remember, we're trying to find out how fast. Right? So we are looking for dr over dt. That means we have to solve this equation for dr over dt. We're solving for this guy. To do that, we need to put the numbers in for the other values in this equation. So instead of dA dt, I'm going to put in 8 for 8 millimeters per, uh, squared per second. And instead of r, I'm going to put in 171 millimeters. And then to solve this problem, to find out how fast the radius is changing, I simply need to do the calculation 8 divided by, what is this, uh, 342 pi. Is 171 times 2 is 342, I think. So I'll do that calculation, and I find out that the radius is changing at a rate of approximately 0 0.0074 millimeters per second. And there you have it. We just solved our first related rates problem. Now on the next slide, I'm going to break down in an organized way what we did so that you'll have a plan to work from. So the process that I followed is described here in this little chart where we list the strategy for solving related rates problems. We always begin by drawing a picture and, more importantly, by putting variables on that picture for anything that's changing. And then also, although we didn't have it in the last problem, we need to also pay attention if there are any constants in our problem. If something is constant and never changing, you can label it right on the picture. But if it's changing, don't put any measurements in the picture, just put the variable name. Remember that everything that we do is with respect to time, and we'll use t for the time variable. And then, of course, we mentioned that all the other variables are functions of t. That's why we have to follow the chain rule in our implicit differentiation. Sorry. Uh, once you've got the picture drawn, we're going to make a list on the side of any of the numerical information from the, from the statement of the problem. So that's what we did when we listed the 171 millimeters and the 8 millimeters squared per second for those values. 
And then finally, in the first part of our problem, first, first part of our setup, we wrote down what we were looking for. In the last problem, it was dr over dt. We're usually looking for a rate. And those are expressed as derivatives. Now, the next step is very important. And this is one that's not always easy. Once you have a picture with your labels, your variables labeled, and your other information listed on the side, you have to write an equation that relates the variables. So you find from another uh, branch of math or another um, time in your studies an equation that relates those variables. Sometimes you have to build the equation from more than one uh, branch of mathematics. You use your problem solving skills and your reading skills to set that thing up. At some point you might even need a second equation which will help us eliminate some variables but we have to have one equation because that's the thing that we're going to do the implicit differentiation on which is here listed as step five. Once you have your equation you do the di implicit differentiation with respect to t. You differentiate that thing. It means do the derivative. And then finally once you've taken the derivative the last thing we need to do is evaluate. That means plug the numbers in that you have from the from the information and then also we're going to solve, right? Evaluate and solve for the missing values. So in a nutshell that's our strategy. If you were in class I gave you a, a small rectangle of paper with this strategy already written out on it. Um, but you can easily jot these notes down too uh, on your own. And this is the process that we'll follow when we do the next two examples. Draw a picture, label the variables, write down any numerical information. Make sure you write down what you're asked to find. And then more importantly, write an equation that relates the variables so you can do the derivative and then evaluate it and solve. Let's see how it works in another problem. A hot air balloon rising straight up from a level field is tracked by a rangefinder 500 feet from the liftoff point. At the moment the rangefinder's elevation is pi over 4, the angle is increasing at a rate of 0 0.14 radians per minute. How fast is the balloon rising at that moment? I think I have a typo here. That's supposed to be one word, so I'm just going to own it and move on. Okay, so what we're going to do is draw a picture of the situation first. And you're allowed to have a little fun with this thing. So here's my little range finder. I'm just going to make that a dot. And then 500 feet away, I have a balloon that is rising into the air. Balloons look something like this. There's a basket on there. And then there's some ropes or cables attached to the big old balloon. And there it is. And then they have a smiley face on them. And so uh, that's my balloon. It's awesome. Uh, the, the balloon is rising, so I put a, an arrow here indicating that that is changing. And then notice we are asked to, um, infer, we're asked about the angle, or we're told about the angle that the uh, rangefinder is making with the balloon. That happens when you point the rangefinder at the balloon, right? So this angle here is changing. So this distance here, the height of the balloon is changing, and so is this angle that the rangefinder makes. So we need variables on both of those. Since this thing's going straight up, we can put a 90 degree angle there. So I'm going to call the height of the balloon h, and that's changing, so it gets a variable. And I'm going to call the angle that the path, uh, the, the rangefinder makes uh, with the ground. I'm going to call that theta, and it is also changing. Something that's not changing is the distance that the rangefinder is from the point of liftoff. That is 500 feet, and it stays 500 feet. So I can put that number right on my picture. They also tell us some other information that I'll list on the side. I'm told that at the time the angle theta is pi over 4, it's increasing at a rate of 0 0.14 radians per minute. Remember, rates are derivatives, so that means that that is d theta over dt, and that equals 0 0.14 radians per minute. Okay, now I've accounted for all the information in the problem, but I need to know what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find how fast the balloon is rising. Well, when it says how fast, don't forget, that is a derivative. So I'm trying to find a derivative for the height. In other words, I'm trying to find dh over dt. 
That's the thing I'm trying to find. Okay, got the picture, got the information. I know what I'm trying to find. Now I need an equation that relates these variables. I need an equation that relates theta with h. And after staring at this for a little while, a light bulb comes on in my head, looking similar to my hot air balloon, as a matter of fact. It's hovering right over my head. And I remember from geometry class that we learned about trigonometry and that there's a trigonometric ratio called tangent. And the tangent of theta is the opposite side over the adjacent side. And I can write that relationship here h over 500, and now I have an equation relating my variables. Once you have the equation, you hop right into calculus mode, and you start to do the derivative implicitly. Remember that theta and h are both functions of t, so we have to use the chain rule. The derivative of tangent theta is secant squared theta, but then because of the chain rule, I have to multiply by d theta dt. And just keep in mind that you can rewrite this h over 500 is 1 over 500 times h. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. And the derivative of 1 over 500 times h is just 1 over 500. But then because h is a, is a function of time, we're going to multiply by the dh dt because of the chain rule. Okay, so now I have an equation relating the rates, which is a related rates equation. My next step is to evaluate. So I'm going to plug in numbers for theta, I'm going to put pi over 4, and for d theta dt, I'm going to put 0 0.14, and then I'm going to see what the value, what the you know answer for dh dt is. Uh, so I'm going to do secant squared of pi over 4 times 0 0.14, and that equals 1 over 500 dh dt. And then I can multiply both sides by 500 and finish this thing off. So dh over dt, I flip the equation around, is going to equal 500 times the secant squared of pi over 4. For bonus points, uh, let's erase that and let's call it 2. Because the secant of pi over 4 is the square root of 2. And when you square the square root of 2, you get 2. So for those of you that remember your unit circle, you can do that without your calculator. And then we got to multiply by 0 0.14. So we're going to multiply that together and find out approximately uh, the rate at which the balloon is rising. And that's going to equal 140 um, feet per minute. Distance is measured in feet and time is measured in minutes in this particular problem. So we now have solved for what we were looking for, which was dh over dt. It's 140 feet per minute. And that's the process for these related rates problems. Again, I can't stress enough how important the step is right here where you write the equation that relates the variables. It's not always obvious, and sometimes it will come from physics, sometimes it will come from geometry, but you get that equation down, then you can do the calculus. I've got one more example for you, and then we're going to call this video uh, done so that you can get to your problems. A police cruiser approaching a right angle intersection from the north is chasing a speeding car that has turned the corner and is now moving straight east. When the cruiser is 0 0.6 miles north of the intersection and the car is 0 0.8 miles east of the intersection, the police determine with radar that the distance between them and the car is increasing at a rate of 20 miles per hour. If the cruiser is moving at 60 miles an hour at the instant of the measurement, what is the speed of the car? Okay, so you know our routine here. We're going to start with a picture. You're going to have to know your compass to draw an accurate picture, but um, I happen to remember that north is here and east is here. So I have a police cruiser that is moving in this direction towards the right angle. And I have the speeding car moving away from the right angle to the east here. So this one's moving down and this one's moving to the right. And I need variables for those measurements because both are changing. Even though at the moment in time we know the measurements, they're not fixed. So we're going to put some variables on there. Uh, here's the right angle. So 
just for the sake of argument here, I'm going to call the police cruiser's distance A and the speeder B. Now they take a measurement with their radar and they find out that the distance between the cars, which is this distance here, is increasing. So this thing is getting bigger, right? It's getting bigger. At the time they took the measurement, it's 20 miles an hour. What we don't have listed here is what that measurement is, but we know it's changing because it's getting bigger. I'm going to put a variable on there. Why don't we call it C? Now, I do have some information in the statement of the problem that I'm going to list also. So when we took the measurement, A was 0 0.6 miles and B was 0 0.8 miles. And even though it doesn't state it here, if I run through the Pythagorean theorem, I can find that C is actually one mile at that moment in time just by using a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Spoiler alert, we're going to use that equation again in a few minutes. Uh, I am told that the distance between them, the dc over dt, the rate at which the distance between them is changing, is 20 miles an hour. So I'm going to list that. And I know that the police cruiser at the time that we're taking that measurement is 60 miles an hour. Now be careful here. Because the cruiser is going in the down direction, because this distance is getting smaller, that rate is actually negative. Uh, so the police cruiser, uh, which is dA over dt, is at a rate of negative 60. And that's a subtle but important piece of information. The direction that you're moving for your velocity matters, right? And we learned that when we talked about physics. And in particular, if that distance A is getting smaller, then its rate is negative. We're not just interested in the speed, we're interested in the velocity. Now what we're trying to find is the speed of the car, which is dB dt. So when I do my equation, this is what I'm going to solve for. Now back to that Pythagorean theorem. I'm looking at a triangle with A, B, and C labeled, and I remember from geometry class that the Pythagorean theorem relates those variables. Uh, A squared plus B squared equals c squared. And once I have that equation down, I can start doing the derivative. Remember, a, b, and c are all functions of time. So the derivative of a squared is 2a, and then you got to multiply by dA dt because of the chain rule. The derivative of b squared is 2b times db over dt because of the chain rule. And the derivative of, two of c squared is 2c, you guessed it, dc over dt. Now I have my derivative written out. Now I can evaluate. Please don't put the numbers in until after you do the derivative. So we're going to plug in a bunch of numbers. And um, actually, let's do a little bit of simplifying first. Since all of these have a factor of 2, I'm just going to cancel the 2's to make my life easier. And now I'll plug in the numbers. A is 0 0.6. dA dt is negative 60. Plus B is 0 0.8. I am solving for dB dt, so I have to write that in as a variable. And then C, we've computed to be 1, and dC dt is 20. So 1 times 20 is 20. I'm just going to write that there. And now I'm simply going to solve this equation. Uh, 0.6 times 60 is probably something like negative, three, negative 36 plus 0 0.8 dB dt equals 20. I'll add 36 to both sides and I'll get 0 0.8 dB dt is going to be, what, 56? And then I gotta divide by 0 0.8. And when I do that, I get 70 dB dt is 70 miles per hour. So right now that car is actually going faster than the police cruiser. 70 miles per hour. Same strategy as the one we listed before. You draw a picture, you label anything that's changing with a variable, you get organized and list your information from the problem along with the thing you're trying to find. And then again, that crucial step, coming up with an equation that relates the variables so that you can actually do the calculus. The calculus kicks in right here when we're gonna do the implicit differentiation. And then you plug the numbers in and solve for the missing quantity. Usually it's a rate. 
okay, that's enough for now. Um, you've got four problems or I don't know, something like four problems to work on. So give those a go. Uh, if you need me, you know where to find me. Take care.